Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to do something very interesting. We're going to do a reverse dark side astro trip. Wait, what? So basically, my wife has some exams kind of on like the outskirts of Tokyo, let's say in between Tokyo and Haneda airport. And to make her like basically wake up as late as possible before her exam, we're going to stay uh, the night at a very cheap hotel uh, towards the Shimbashi uh, basically work district of Tokyo, which is right smack dab in the middle of Tokyo. And uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to go and do some uh, astrophotography in a park called the Shiba Koen or Shiba Park. Um, and so uh, that will be a rehearsal for me to go to a dark zone, see if everything works. So that's why this is a reverse dark zone astro trip, because we are going to an even wider zone than we are in right now. Um, I personally am uh, very square in the middle of the Tokyo megalopolis, um, a very, very light polluted area, um, but I am not completely at the center. And officially, I am actually uh, roughly 500 meters away from uh, Tokyo itself. Oof. And um, so we're going to see what we have when we get into a really, really bad situation. I'll also do something else. Uh, since the weather forecast is being really, really good for um, the night and for the following day, I will actually open up my telescope uh, before leaving home tonight. And uh, that way I can remote control it from the hotel room, assuming the internet works properly. So what do we have in here? We have first um, a tripod. So that is a tripod that I showed in a previous video. Uh, for the um, my AZ, AZ EQ5, but right now we're having just a standard 3 8 of an inch uh, photographic thread. So that tripod is beefy and I think it will do the work well. We have uh, the AZ GTI, which you recently saw me tune, hopefully. We'll see, this will be the first use post uh, tuning. Um, we have, you know, USB cables, power cables, battery, DC splitter, and uh, dew heater there. Uh, we have the main yeah, imaging rig, which is uh, an ASI 533MC Pro, um, a, a spacer, an astromechanics adapter for the autofocusing, and a 200mm f2.8 Canon lens, along with a QHY mini guide scope kind of uh, set for guiding. Uh, we have a counterweight bar for the AZ-GTI. We have the wedge for the AZ GTI. We have a small cute, I think it's one kilogram counterweight, uh, Vixen counterweight, which works well with my counterweight shaft. And we have some, um, what do you call it? Allen screwdrivers, or Allen wrenches. Um, this is because to uh, set in the, uh, the actual uh, uh, AZ GTI in here, for example, I need a, a hex uh, bolt, I, I need to tighten the hex bolt, that kind of stuff. And all of this will go inside this backpack. And once it has gone inside the backpack, then stuff like, you know, toothbrushes and pajamas and, you know, kind of like unimportant stuff compared to this will go in. <laughs> so we'll see how this pans out. And here it is done. That was quick and easy. With that, you know, I have everything in that backpack. It is a bit heavy. Okay, and I'm in Shinjuku right now. I feel super weird taking a video like that. But then, you know, I'm a foreigner very visibly like that. So I think people will forgive me, hopefully. And so in the end, ah, everything fits in that little backpack, which is nice. Um, I didn't forget my computer, which is good as well. I also have all of my stuff to spend the night. I don't really have a change of clothes except underwear, but then, you know, in a, a place where everyone wears, wears masks because of uh, coronavirus, no one can smell you stink. Okay, and I'm on my way to the park. Well, I hope so. Um, so we got to the hotel room, we got dinner, 
And I completely forgot my mask going out again, but you know, it's not like I'm gonna talk to many people. The streets are pretty much empty. Um, and so I'm going to head to, head to the Shiba, Shiba Park, Shiba Koen, and we'll see what's there. <laughs> it might be super bright, but I'm like, I'm really impressed that so many offices and places are actually dark. So that might actually have been helpful in recent days. Although, you know, nice street lighting that looks like LED at uh, a high Kelvin temperature of color. So, hmm. oh yeah, and I forgot to mention from the hotel I did manage to remote control my setup at home. That seems to be working. It's always, uh, always good. It was a bit of a gamble for me to just leave everything open, uh, but uh, seems to be working and we're targeting the Wizard Nebula in uh, Narrowband back at home. But here we're gonna use the AZ GTI mount to see how well it works. And also it's a bit of a dress re rehearsal for me before I go into a dark zone. Cause who knows, maybe I'll just have forgotten a piece of equipment and all you'll see is me cursing and uh, being super annoyed at myself for forgetting some things. Uh, so uh, you can see we have a small shiny obstacle back there in the Northern horizon, also known as Tokyo Tower. And <laughs> that might make our celestial pole adjustment, our polar alignment of the mount a bit more difficult, but we'll see how we manage that. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, so the park itself is probably a bit more that direction. It's been a long time since I've been here and I'm go not gonna go up Tokyo Tower today, no. Uh, it is hot even now and humid. Okay, and I think I have no idea where this is. I've never been to this particular spot, but you can see we're like kind of in a, an isolated, no, not a lot of public light kind of area. We have Tokyo Tower, we have the Prince Hotel, we have, you know, the standard like Tokyo non Shinjuku building. So we're still not in Shinjuku. We have a storm raging on back to the east. Uh, so fun stuff. So we've hit a few snags, oh, maybe a lot of snags. Uh, first, polar alignment was absolutely impossible. I am not able to see Polaris at all. Neither was SharpCap able to solve anything. It was a mess. So that was one thing. Second thing, the Ascom driver, uh, sorry, the SynScan app actually expected something like, um, and had a default altitude limit of 75 degrees, I guess, to avoid like hitting the telescope in alt as mode into the tripod which I had to remove. I wasn't understanding why I wasn't able to slew to the Veil Nebula. Um, so my polar alignment is completely random, like purely based on Google Maps uh, to find out where the north is more precisely than a compass and on the very bad, bad, bad um, scale on the wedge itself. So with that, we've actually started the sequence. I can see autofocus is actually currently running properly, which sounds a bit amazing and we are on the Veil Nebula. Now I've, I'm taking the, the guiding is all over the place as you can tell from you know poor polar alignments so I'm guiding in definition in one direction only. It's still pretty bad. Uh, so we're staying we're at around four um, four arc seconds RMS which is not glorious and uh, we're gonna try to take 15 seconds pictures and see what happens. It's not gonna be glorious, but you know, uh, let's take, uh, you know, I'm not going to get anything out of here, but uh, with Tokyo Tower right there. But let's go for uh, for a few, like for maybe 30, 30 minutes of image, imaging and see what happens next. Well, anyway, um, the guiding is completely terrible, uh, but I'm looking at the imaging tab. I'm not sharing my screen with you guys here, but. I am going to right now, we are actually seeing the Veil Nebula and this is in the middle of Tokyo, like literally in the middle of Tokyo. We are now imaging away in the shadow of the Tokyo Tower or maybe like not the shadow, the brightness of the Tokyo Tower that is actually catching shadows. I can see shadows around me. Awesome! Uh, what's really fun about the Tokyo Tower as well on top of that is that I'm not sure whether you can see because I cannot even like make sure that you are seeing everything but uh, because there's no screen to tell me what this camera is filming but uh, Tokyo Tower is actually letting out a stream of light above it that crosses like almost exactly the path of the Veil Nebula so we're trying to image through that too now that's like 
ah, the beautiful this condition in the world. And of course, I am being eaten alive by, by mosquitoes. But you know, no sacrifice is too big for this stupid hobby <laughs> that I love so much. Oh, I feel so stupid. There's so many people just passing by and like looking at this weird guy here and like they notice I'm uh, foreigner looking so they're like making weird comments in Japanese thinking I don't understand I'm like huh uh, I haven't called anyone out no one was too mean <laughs> but it is uh, it is kind of funny um, I, I am not super at ease in this situation uh, but hey you know uh, it's, a, it's an interesting experience and the worst part is we can actually see the Veil Nebula on the live stack. It makes no sense whatsoever. So, you know, whatever comes out of this, I'll make sure to uh, process it, at least to some extent, and post the image at the end of this video. <laughs> because it makes no sense. This is a bit too much fun and a bit too futile, even for me. But hey, you know, that's the fun part of the, of the game. And with this, I've had my fun. Um, the sequence ended, the mount parked, my camera is warming, everything's doing fine. So, technically speaking, besides the polar alignment, uh, things seem, seem to be working okay. Now, uh, I'm gonna pack up everything, go back to my hotel room, and get some sleep. And then I'm gonna process whatever came out of this. The life stack is actually not so bad, so uh, we'll see what we can get like under the stupidly crazy conditions. I've had my fun. It was fun, but uh, now's the time to call it a night. <laughs> so uh, with that, you know, I'll leave the image at the end of this video, but you know, thank you so much for watching and accompanying me on this stupid anti-astro trip or reverse dark side travel trip. Um, you know, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you are not subscribed to this channel, I typically don't do such stupid videos, but you know, it's uh, it's fun to always try that. It's always about astronomy and astrophotography. Lots of techno technical tips and tri tricks. If that sounds like it's something that should interest you, uh, feel free, free to go down in below, click on the subscribe button and in general if you like this video uh, please click go down click the like button leave a comment down below about anything you want to talk about about this stupid video and <laughs> anything else uh, you want to ask me or you have any comments on and uh, you know as always thank you so much for watching whenever you can don't forget to look up at the dome of light pollutions about above you and the stars if you see some and <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time